Let me introduce myself. I'm Nastasia Rinjina. I'm a student of the Samaria University, Faculty of Electronics and Instrument Engineering. My major is Electronics and Nanoelectronics. Today I'm going to tell you about lasers. I'll pass out copies of my slides so you can make notes as I go through the presentation. I'll be happy to answer your questions after the presentation since the time for speaking is limited. My presentation will be interesting to those students whose speciality is related to lasers or its components, as well as to a wide circle of people who are interested in using lasers in everyday life and want to learn something new. I've divided my presentation into six main points. I'll pay special attention to sections related directly to how the laser works, its applications and calculation of the optical element coating. I would like to start with a definition. What is a laser? The word laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. In other words, light particles excited by current or another radiation emit energy in the form of light. This light is directed into the laser beam. So let's start with the basic principles of laser operation. On this slide we see a comparison of radiation from a flashlight and from a laser pointer. The flashlight emits white light consisting of all the rainbow colors. These colors have different wavelengths, different phases and a large divergence. In a laser uh, the wavelengths are the same, they propagate in the same phase and they have small divergence. Thus, we can distinguish the main differences between laser radiation and radiation from other sources. They are monochromaticity, directionality and coherence. So, now let's talk about how the laser works on the example of a DPSS laser. All lasers consist of three parts, external pump source, active medium and cavity. A pump source directs external energy into the cavity. The active medium is located inside the cavity. According to the design, the active medium can consist of a gas mixture, a crystal, a semiconductor or a fiberglass. When pump energy is supplied to the active medium, it's converted into radiation. Now, I'd like to take a closer look at the cavity operation principle. The active medium of the laser is located between two mirrors, as you can see in this slide, with special coatings, a cavity. Radiation from an active medium is amplified by a cavity. Thus, a monochromatic, coherent and directional beam is induced. Only radiation of a certain wavelength can penetrate through the cavity and mirror, and of another wavelength leave the cavity through the output mirror. The directional radiation transmitted through the output mirror is called laser radiation. Let's move on to the next point. Imagine yourself in a shop and you are ready to go pay for your goods. Then you go home and watch a movie on your DVD player. Do you think you would need a laser for these tasks? Yes, you would need a laser for both of these tasks. In the shop it's a barcode scanner and in a DVD player laser is used to read data from a disk. Lasers are also used in medicine to perform complex operations and operations without incisions. In entertainment field, lasers are used to create enchanting laser shows. And in industry, lasers are used for cutting, welding, uh, and growing, and so forth. So, the next, so, uh, the next point is lasers in movies. Who doesn't like to watch movies? Lasers often appear there too. For example, in the film Real Genius, House was raised to the ground with a laser. Uh, in the film X-Men, one of the heroes has the ability to shoot laser radiation by his eyes. In the movie The Avengers, one of the heroes has a laser weapon built into his suit. And in Star Wars and Star Trek, people fight with the laser swords. Now we are going to talk about experimental part. I calculated the optical coating for a cavity and mirror of a DPSS laser, a skin of which we can see at the bottom of this slide. Coating was calculated for two sides of a cavity and mirror. It 
is necessary to apply according to site A, the total low radiation with a pump wavelength of 808 nanometers to pass into the cavity. As we see, the ground bottom sound in the region of uh, the wavelength of 808 nanometers. That is, radiation with this wavelength will completely pass into the cavity. The next slide shows the optical coating calculation for site B. Uh, on site B, it's necessary to apply such a coating that would transmit radiation with a pump wavelength and reflect radiation with a laser wavelength, which is 1064 nanometers. We say grab with a lot of ups and downs, but don't be scared. We are only interested in the region at a wavelength of 808 nanometers and 1064 nanometers. In the first case, we see that the graph hits a low uh, and holds firm in a small range of wavelengths around 808 nanometers. That means that all radiation at this wavelength will penetrate into the cavity. Then we see that the graph rockets up to 100% reflection and remains stable in a large range of wavelengths. Thus, radiation at a wavelength of 1064 nanometers will be completely reflected from a cavity and mirror inside the cavity. The next slide shows the coating calculation results for sites A and B. To achieve the desired result for site B, 15 layer coating have been needed. You see how much difficult it is to make a coating that provides the necessary optical element performance for two wavelengths. So now Now we'd like to hold a small quiz. Uh, here all the statements look unrealistic, but let's try to find one that is actually false. So, what is the wrong statement? The first one is, laser light show can damage your cameras. Second one is, the laser tag was developed by the military. Third one is, in December 2019, Russian scientists invented a laser combat grenade launcher to destroy meteorites. Uh, fourth one is, Using a laser, you can hit materials up to 15 million degrees Celsius. And the last one is, in 1984, Soviet scientists had, have invented a laser pistol. So, correct answer is, in December 2019, Russian scientists invented a laser grenade launcher to destroy meteorites. So, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Today, we've discussed the principle of laser operation. Uh, what it consists of and the spheres of its application. We've also figured out the calculation of optical element coatings. We've learned about the main properties of laser radiation, monochromaticity, coherence and directionality. The calculation of the optical element coating is considered. Now we know that lasers are an integral part of our daily life. At the end of my presentation, I would like to show you an example of a coated optical element. As you can see, it's a mirror. The coating on its surface transmits shades of blue and reflects all other colors. colors. Let's do a little experiment. If we direct a radiation of ordinary white color, we will see that blue color and some of, it, of its shades pass through this mirror and other colors are reflected from this. So, let's develop laser technology. Thanks for attention. If you have any questions, I'll be, I'll be happy to answer them.